very good morning to you uh, as we share with you in this very short, simple service this morning from Hollywood Baptist Church. We, we, we do hope to improve on it over the, the next uh, few weeks. We've been caught a bit on the hop this week as things have progressed so quickly. So our, our contents is not what we would like it to be and the quality is not what we would like it to be either. But we hope that this will be a way of staying in touch both uh, with one another and of worshipping God together and of, of seeing how we can help in, in the community. So I hope that you'll, you'll be able to join us each week at, at 10.30. You should have got a letter just recently explaining how we, we hope to be uh, continuing to, to function as a church both together and in the community. Uh, and please excuse the, the limited uh, contents today and we hope for, for better things uh, in the weeks ahead as we seek to share together. There's plenty of other opportunities online of course to enjoy services, uh, services that are streamed live from venues that, that are much better set up than we are at the moment uh, and I hope that you'll take the time to do that, to, to keep your faith strong uh, and to keep growing and uh, to keep your confidence up uh, as we face challenging days together. So uh, this is a, a very brief introduction to what will be uh, a work in progress. So good morning Junior Church, good morning boys and girls. Um, this is a bit strange and uh, normally on a Sunday morning we are of course upstairs in the youth room and we're starting junior church. So why are we not together? Well as you probably heard your mums and dads say there is this virus going around at the moment and that sounds a bit scary and it sounds a bit complicated but really it is easily passed between people and so the government have asked us to stay away from each other and so we've decided not to have church and as you'll probably hear your mums and dads say that means as well that we've got to stay away from people because it's easily passed on from our coughs and sneezes and so that's why we're staying at home but the good news is as Aaron has already said we're planning to have this form of church um, on a weekly basis and we hope that you'll get together with us at half ten on a Sunday morning and we can do this together and what a great opportunity to get together in our families so boys and girls we're not upstairs we're not in the youth room but we're going to be doing a uh, junior church a little differently so what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and get some resources uh, some of our junior church materials for you every week so as you know we've been looking at the life of King David and King Solomon in the past few weeks and that's something that um, we've been we've been learning so much about each of each of them uh, and as we know King David and King Solomon didn't always do what God wanted them to do they turned their back on God so often and we've heard so many bits of those stories and so many parts of their lives as they did that but David as we know did come back to God he realized that God was his rock and he realized time and time again and in fact as as you probably know David wrote many of the Psalms a book in the middle of the Bible the Psalms and so this morning maybe one of the things that I'd like you to take away is just something really really simple as we've thought about and looked at the life of David uh, one of the Psalms that he wrote and there are lots and lots of Psalms that, that are appropriate at the moment it says in Psalm 46 that God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in Psalm 46. And really, what does that mean that God is our refuge? What really that means God at times like this. He's a place of ours is there to be our refuge in this that we can go bring our problems to him. And in all of the awful things that are happening in our country and around the world at the moment, that we can go to him these times. So we're going to be getting new materials for Junior Church. But there's one other thing that I thought that at this time you could be doing with your family because we're going to have lots of time at home together. We know that there are people round about our community who are going to need our help at this time and wouldn't it be lovely if you boys and girls and your mums and dads could do something to help them. So we've produced these little cards. Aaron has lots of these little cards and, and he's going to be telling your mums and dads about them too. And really simply what it says is, can I help you? 
can I get some shopping for you or can I help you in some way? And so wouldn't it be great if you, with your mums and dads, could go around some of your neighbours and pop this through their door for a time when it's hard. We know this is going to be hard for older people especially and so boys and girls it would be great if you could help with your mums and dads in that. You need to remember you need to stay well back from people and you need to shake hands with people and it's really really important in all of this. If you can pop that through their door, your, their doors, your neighbours and offer to help them. And really most importantly on the back of that it says what I've just been talking about. It's really what we would love our neighbours to know, love those around us to know that what we believe is and what is true is that God is our refuge at such difficult times. So, thanks for listening, guys. Um, I hope you have a, a good week. I hope you enjoy being homeschooled. It's going to be a bit different this week being homeschooled. Please be patient with your mums and dads. Everyone's looking after you. Um, this is tough. It's a bit different for everybody. And maybe your mums and dads will see how difficult it is for teachers in your school. But please be patient with them. I hope you have a good week. Be blessed. Hello, everyone. It's great to be able to connect with you all in this way. And we know this isn't the way things should be or the way things where we want things to be this isn't church in all its its fullness but it's the way things are for the time martin luther said about meeting together as a church he said at home in my own house there is no warmth or vigor in me but in the church when the multitude is gathered together a fire is kindled in my heart and it breaks its way through for him meeting together, not because you're in a, in a special building or anything like that, but because you're together as God's people. For him that was special and moved his heart in special ways, and that's, that resonates with me. But we're going to pray, pray that God would light that fire in our hearts, not a, when we're together, because it can't be, but even when we're meeting together at a distance like this, that we wouldn't lose that, that spiritual life and, and vigour that we enjoy in, in him. Um, and thank God for the, the technology that we have that we can use and, and be able to connect and, and meet together in this in this way. But look, I just want to, to read a psalm, then we're going to pray, uh, and then we'll hand over to, to, to Alistair. I want to read from Psalm 20, just a, a, all n- nine verses of Psalm 20. To the choir master, a psalm of David. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and give you support from Zion. May he remember all your offerings and regard with favour your burnt sacrifices, Selah. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfil all your plans. May we shout for joy over your salvation and in the name of our God, set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven with the saving might of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. They collapse and fall. But we rise and stand upright. O Lord, save the King. May he answer us when we call. Let's pray. We're going to pray. and I'm borrowing some words from the the Church of England. have produced some prayers in response to the coronavirus. So I'm going to borrow some. Some of these words will be mine. Some of them will be be borrowed from those. But it's all prayer to, to God. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you that we can meet together in in this way. And we're conscious of how we long to be together physically, but we thank you that we can connect to each other through through technology. And we come before you, the amazing God, the King over all this earth. And we want to thank you and and worship you from our hearts. Lord, we we don't trust 
in, in the, the, the schemes or the plans of men, but our ultimate trust is in you, our, our great King and Lord. And Lord, in these times, uh, we pray that you would keep us under the shadow of your mercy in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful and lift up all who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. You taught us to love our neighbour and to care for those in need as if we were caring for you. In this time of anxiety, give us strength to comfort the fearful, to tend the sick, and to assure the isolated of our love and your love. Our God of compassion, please be close to those in our church, in our families, in our communities, those who are ill, afraid, or in isolation. In their loneliness, be their consolation. In their anxiety, be their hope. In their darkness, be their light. Through him who suffered alone on the cross, but reigns with you in glory. Merciful God, we entrust to your tender care those who are ill or in pain, knowing that whenever dangers threaten, your everlasting arms are there to hold them safe. Comfort and heal them, restore them to health and strength through Jesus Christ our Lord. We pray too for the hospital staff and medical researchers at this time. Lord, give skill, sympathy and resilience to all who are caring for the sick and your wisdom to those who are searching for a cure. Strengthen them with your spirit that through their work, many will be restored to health through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We pray to you for our families and and the children and those who will be at home together now. We pray that will be a time of of, uh, enjoyment and and, and a blessing for our families. We pray against stress. We pray against frustration. We pray that our children would learn lots about their, their, their education, but also learn about you. Be with our families, protect marriages. Protect relationships, we pray. And Lord, we pray for our, ourselves as, as your church. Lord, we are not people of fear. We are people of courage. We are not people who are worried only about our own safety. We are people who protect our neighbour's safety. We are not people of greed. We are people of generosity. We are your people, God, giving and loving wherever we are, whatever it costs, for as long as it takes, wherever you call us. We pray now as we hear from, from Alistair, as he opens up your word, we pray that you would bless that to your hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we're going to try to continue our, our series uh, looking at the, the last week of Jesus' life on earth uh, leading up to, to the crucifixion, just following on from where we, we were last week. Uh, last week we saw how uh, at a, a feast given uh, in Lazarus' honour, uh, Mary poured very expensive perfume over Jesus' feet uh, and then wiped it away w- with her hair. And of course, she faced a lot of criticism uh, from the, the disciples, probably from some of the other guests. But Jesus said, no, no, leave her alone. She's done a, a beautiful thing for me because she did this in preparation for my burial. Jesus knowing that, that she wouldn't be able to do it afterwards as would be normal. Uh, and so Mary had done this, uh, not even knowing that within a few days, Jesus uh, would die. Well, the next day, which is what we would call uh, the Wednesday of Holy Week, Jesus left Bethany and he traveled the two miles or so into Jerusalem. And I want to read uh, this morning from uh, John's Gospel. We're continuing where we left off and we're going to read from uh, chapter 12, verse 12, down to verse uh, 32. This is John's Gospel, uh, God's Word recorded for us. The next day, the great crowd that had come for the feast heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat upon it as it is written, Do not be afraid, O daughter of Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's coat. At first his disciples did not understand all this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realise that these things had been written about him and that they had done these things to him. Now the crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the, tr- from the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word. Many people, because they had heard that he had given this miraculous sign, went out to meet him. So the Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. 
Now there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the feast. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew. Andrew and Philip in turn told Jesus. Jesus replied, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. I tell you the truth, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. The man who loves his life will lose it, while the man who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My Father will honour the one who serves me. Now my heart is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd that was there and heard it said that it had thundered. Others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus said, this voice was for your benefit, not mine. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. But I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. He said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. We finish there. We finish at verse 33, actually. Luke records that as, as Jesus came down at the Mount of Olives, he saw the city of Jerusalem and he wept for its unbelief. There were, there were huge crowds in Jerusalem for the festival, of course, for the Passover festival, and they, they wait, lined the route and they waved uh, palm branches. That was a sign of, of the Jewish state, of Jewish nationalism. There was deep nationalistic fervour among the crowd, always strong at, at Passover time. Uh, God had promised them this land. The land was now occupied by, by the Romans. And they wondered, was Jesus finally going to drive the Romans out? They shouted, Hosanna, literally, give salvation now. And they called out verses from Psalm 118. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Not referred to the promised Messiah, of course, whom they were waiting for. In fact, those Psalms 113 through to 118 form what's called the Hallel. Psalms sung daily uh, during the Feast of Tabernacles. And when they got to the part when they sang Hosanna, they, they waved palm branches. But the people's understanding of, of the nature of Jesus' mission was very flawed. Uh, they added words not in the psalm. They shouted, blessed is the King of Israel. Their understanding of Jesus' purpose was, was far too small. He, he didn't come as a military king of Israel to defeat uh, the hated Romans. The donkey must have seemed a bit strange to them. Conquering king is coming on chargers. They don't come riding in on donkeys. But Jesus came as a servant king. And if they remembered back, they'd have realized that he was fulfilling the words of the prophet Zechariah when he said, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. And even the disciples didn't understand. That's why we just read at first, the disciples didn't understand this. Only Jesus, only after Jesus was glorified, that they realized that these things had been written about him. And what a contrast there was in those scenes. Uh, as the old hymn says, ride on, ride on in majesty, in lowly pomp, ride on to die. The people were out uh, cheering and, and uh, waiting for a, a king, a military king, a hero. And Jesus came riding on a donkey, came into Jerusalem prepared uh, to die. Well, meanwhile, behind the scenes, the Pharisees were, were plotting Jesus' death, of course. And with the help of, Jews, uh, of Judas, they, they thought they, they could manage it. And little did they know that they were part of God's plan all, all along. When Peter was speaking after uh, Pentecost, he said, They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. <clears throat> Jesus was still firmly in control of his own destiny. We can see just a few thoughts <clears throat> from the, the passage there. In verse 23, we, we see uh, the timing of Jesus' death. Jesus said, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Several times during Jesus' ministry, he said, My hour has not yet come. Like at the wedding in Cana of Galilee when he said that to his mother. And on various occasions, people tried to, to, to seize Jesus, planning to kill him. But he was able to walk away from them because his time had not come. But now the time has come. That, that time chosen from all eternity. Uh, not because the, the Pharisees had finally managed to trap him, but because it was Passover time and Jesus came 
to die the perfect Passover lamb, to die for the sins of the world. And in verse 24, Jesus explains what will happen over the next <clears throat> few days to him. He uses the, a little parable of uh, uh, the example of a grain of wheat, very familiar to people, and he says, unless that grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains a single grain. But if it uh, dies, it will produce many, many more grains. Unless it does so, it achieves nothing. Jesus came to die and to rise again to conquer death and to give new life to many. God's only Son would bring many sons to glory. We sometimes sing in that, that we song, How Deep the Father's Love for Us. He didn't come to receive hero worship like some celebrity performing miracles, attracting crowds. He didn't come as a military leader to oust the hated Romans. He came to die. So in verse 27, Jesus says, For this very reason I came to this hour. And then again in verse 27, we see the cost of Jesus' death to him. Jesus was fully divine. He was God. He never ceased to be God, but he was fully man. And like any man approaching execution, particularly crucifixion, he was troubled. In fact, the Greek word there is very strong. It signifies shocked or agitated or full of revulsion. He was about to be arrested and beaten and spat on and stripped and nailed to a cross. And apart from all the physical suffering, he would experience separation from God as he took our sin upon himself. He would drink the cup of God's wrath, which Isaiah uh, spoke about. And he had almost a conversation with himself. He says, <clears throat> can I ask God to save me from this? And then he answers his own question. No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. And the results of Jesus' death then, we can see in verses 28 uh, to 32. God will be glorified, uh, verse 28. Jesus acknowledged that his, the lights have just gone off. Give me a wee minute here. And we're back. You can see this is very much a trial. We'll get, the, we'll get this right for next week, maybe. Uh, what are the results of Jesus' death? Well, first of all, God will be glorified. Uh, verse 28, Jesus acknowledged that his death would bring glory uh, to God. Father, glorify your name. And the voice spoke from heaven, God's voice, I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. Jesus acknowledged that his death would bring glory to God. He wasn't there to die uh, as a military hero. He wasn't there to lead uh, the people to victory against uh, Rome. After his death would come the resurrection. The Holy Spirit would be given, the church would be born. And God's glory would be seen right around the world, right to the present day. The grain of wheat which, wheat which died would produce many, many more grains. And secondly, Satan would be defeated uh, when Jesus died. Uh, verse 31, now is the time for judgment in this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. Jesus was going to uh, achieve a great victory, but not the victory that people were looking for. Uh, Jesus, in the eyes of the, the leaders, would be defeated. But in Jesus' death, it was Satan who would be defeated. And those who rejected Jesus' salvation would be judged. Martin Luther said of Satan that in Jesus' death, his doom was writ. Jesus died to defeat the powers of Satan. And as a result, in verse 32, salvation would be open to all. But I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. He said that, of course, uh, to show how he would die by, by crucifixion. But he also spoke of his exaltation, his execution, uh, the nature of his death, and then his exaltation as king. Bruce Milne said that the cross is his throne, the crucifixion is his coronation. As Jesus died, he knew that he would be the one who would draw all men to himself and to God through him. And in, in Revelation, that same John, he's writing this account for us, I had a vision of the exalted lamb being worshipped by people from every nation and tribe and tongue, and they were waving palm branches just as the people did as Jesus marched and uh, walked into Jerusalem, went in on, on the donkey into Jerusalem, uh, but in heaven celebrating the one who was risen and victorious. Well, what's our response to these, these, these events? Well, we need to see life from an eternal uh, perspective. Verse 25 there, the man who, loses his, who loves his life will lose it, while the man who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Uh, loving this life is ultimately futile. Uh, it's going to end. 
if all we love is this life, we will we'll lose it eventually. Uh, there's huge panic uh, about the, the coronavirus, the COVID-19 virus at the moment, as it threatens life and it, it's changed life on Earth so much at the moment. And it's right to be concerned. Of course it is. We have to take those measures to try and uh, deal with it. But infinitely more important is to be prepared for eternity. And so many people are, are worrying and fretting and trying to put uh, things in place to prevent the virus spreading and neglecting the eternal life which uh, Jesus came to achieve for them. They're putting all their effort into this life. Uh, and Jesus says, if, if we love this life, ultimately we're, go we're going to lose it. And he says then to us, uh, who are believers today, whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, my servant also will be. My Father will honour the one who serves me. What we have to do in response uh, to what Jesus did for us is to, to accept his forgiveness and then to live a life devoted to serving the one who paid such a price uh, for us. And that would mean taking up our cross, as Mark says in his gospel, and following him. Uh, Jesus looked at the option before him and he said, for this hour I've come. He came, went to the cross to die for us. And we must give our lives to him in service to the one who gave his life for us. We must never take Jesus' death lightly. Never underestimate the cost. That's why we remember uh, so regularly in communion, Jesus' death for us. Because it was Jesus' death that brought us life. And as we continue these weeks to approaching Easter in the midst of all the chaos that's going on in our local society and in our world, we want to remember uh, why Jesus came. We want to give him thanks uh, and we want to offer our lives to him in service and in love for the one who gave everything for us.